In a previous video, we've looked at the data template. So that was to make your data look pretty uh, inside a list. You can apply different templates and it will look awesome. Um, if you want that video, look into the corner, it should pop up right now. And in this video, this is a little continuation of that. Um, you can also, depending on a condition that you can uh, provide yourself, you can implement data template selectors. So you can um, select different templates depending on the kind of data that you're showing. Want to know how it works? Let's find out. So here we are in a file new Xamarin Forms application. You can see the code running on the left. Uh, you see the running uh, code actually on the simulator on the right. And um, let's start as always with the very important change here. So data template selector sample. There we go, we're underway. So with hot reload, you can see this update automatically. So that is very awesome. Now, I'm not going to use any of these labels. Um, so let's remove them right now. And let's replace this with a collection view. Here we go. Um, so this also works for a list view. But um, as you might know by now, you should use a collection view because list view, let's be honest, it's a nice thing, but it's not always that performance. So collection view is the spiritual successor of the list view. Um, let's use that. And there is one important note um, that I will tell you right now. If you're using a list view, then uh, your data template has to use a view cell um, as the root note. And with a collection view, your template can uh, contain any kind of layout. So we'll see in a little bit what that means, but uh, I just want to tell you that upfront. So, but here we go, collection view. So let's add some. Um, items to this. So I'll do this with the item source and a little bit of binding sample items. Here we go. So I'm not going to go into all the binding stuff right now, but um, uh, if there's anything unclear, please let me know. I will create a video or maybe I've already done that in the corner. You should see a playlist pop up in your video right now that will contain all kinds of videos about uh, data binding. So maybe that will make it a little bit more clear to you. But for now, we are going to create a sample items in our code behind. So let's do that here. Uh, public, make it a list of simple strings. Of course, this can also be like more complex items or anything. Sample items, oops, let's make the casing right, else it can't find it. And very pro tip right here, make it a property because that has uh, given me a lot of headaches that I didn't implement this as a property and then it won't work with the data binding because data binding only looks for properties. Uh, so I'm just going to create a simple list right here. So with a couple of strings, typically, this would probably be an observable collection with more complex items that you're showing. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to initialize this with something like, Hey, there, friend, um, something other random. So let's make another entry in here. Um, did you already subscribe? Do it now. So, you know, maybe you have something to subscribe to and you want to do it now. I'll give you a little moment. One eternity later. Okay, there we go. So I cut a couple of strings. It will be three. And for this data binding to work, let's set the binding context to this. So this is our main page. So now it will know to look for the sample items property I have here. Uh, and it will wire that up to the item source right here. So uh, that should give us the uh, collection view with a couple of items. Um, actually, you know, let's just run it and um, see if that actually comes up, it should. So and while this is loading, let me talk you through the rest. So what you would normally do, as you can see in my other video about uh, the data templates, what you would do is set a item template here. And that item template will be applied to each of the items. So in our case, three items uh, will be applied to each of these items as a template. Um, so you know, you could style it a little bit better, maybe you have some complex object in here that has not only this text, but also an image. Uh, and you can all have that show up in that template. So that is very cool. Um, here's our app coming up. So let's see if our items come in. There we go. So what we can do now is not just provide that with a static template, but we can implement a data template selector. So that decides based on a piece of logic, which template to give back 
to actually show the item and you can determine the logic so it can be can be anything um, so let's see how to do that right now we're going to create a new class here in the solution um, in our shared code and i'm going to add new class and i'm going to do this our subscribe uh, data template selector so this can be anything of course this is just the name that you want to um, add it into your project with and we're going to inherit this from the data template selector which is something that lives in xamarin forms so let's add using xamarin.forms here and then it should automatically uh, see that uh, and you will notice that it will automatically throw us an error uh, because we need to implement the abstract class right here so let's intellisense that solve that for us here we go i don't need the constructor uh, and what you typically would do is also add a couple of properties here and those properties are the different templates that can be applied. So by doing that, um, it will be a little bit more configurable. Uh, so you can reuse it for other parts of your application as well. Uh, of course, in this, because this is the method that decides which template is going to be returned. Um, so of course, if you just want to return a static template based on some logic, that's something you can totally do. Uh, but I like to make them a little bit more reusable by providing some properties to make them configurable. We will see in a little bit how that works. Um, but let's add a property right here uh, that will be a data template then because that is the thing that we're returning and let's make this the uh, subscribe template here we go so this is just a name this can be anything and let's copy and paste this one we want to have another one and this will just be the other so we will have one template for uh, the subscribe and uh, one template for the other which which can be anything um, and if we look at this method right here so this is invoked by um, you know the the collection view whenever it has to evaluate this item and which template to apply um, so it will run through this piece of code and you can see it's provided with the item this is the actual item from our collection so in our case that will be uh, one of these three strings but if you have a complex object it will be that full complex object that you can cast and uh, reach into all the properties uh, but in our case it's just a string and this will be the bindable object the container so this will most likely be the collection view in our case of or if you're um, doing this for a list view then this will be the list view so i've said it a couple of times already the logic in here can be anything uh, but for me it's going to be very very simple because i know the item is going to be a string so i'm just going to call it to string and see if that contains a uh, lowercase subscribe because that was what i put in there and if it does it's going to return the subscribe template and otherwise it's going to return the other template so there we go. So yeah, it's it's just what it says on the tin. If the string that is coming in here contains subscribe, it will return this template that I've configured here. Else, if that's not the case, then it will skip over this if and go to this return and it will return the other template that I've configured here. So that's, that's all in its place. So let's see how we can now apply this from our main page. So let's go to our main page right here. And in the content page, I'm going to configure a couple of resources. Uh, I also have some videos on how to work with resources, so um, go check them out. Uh, it should pop up on your screen and you can find them in the video description below. Um, so I will skip over that a little bit. If it's going too fast for you, check out those other videos as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is the content page dot uh, resources, and this will be a resource dictionary we need to have in here. And now I'm going to configure first the two templates that I want to use. Um, again, this also can be anything. So this is going to be that data template again and i'm going to give that a name so i can reference them uh, this is going to be my subscribe subscribe template and this this again this name is can be anything so this doesn't have to reflect anything that i've typed before this this is just the name that you want to reference it by um, in this xaml page and in our case it's just going to be a label with again some binding um whoops no not here the binding i need to do the text and then the binding there we go and i'm going to make that dot because the way this works is uh, for each item in my collection the scope now has changed so this is not our 
um, collection anymore. But in here, it will just be that one item in the selection that is evaluated right now. And in my case, this is only a string. So I'm just going to access the string with this dot here. Again, data binding is a magical thing. So if there's more you want to know about this, let me know in the comments and I'll see to it that I create another video for that. Now, this is my subscribe template. Uh, let's make it a little bit different so that we make the text, whoops, the text color, well, the text decorations. Uh, let's make it under strike through. No, I want underline. Strike through is not good. Underline, there we go. And let's make the text color uh, is going to be YouTube red. So here we go. Um, and whenever we now do the other template, so let's copy this one and let's create another one here. There we go. And this is going to be our other template. And this is going to, you know, just have, well, actually, let's give it a text color of um, green, just so you can see the difference. Um, so our templates are ready. These are the templates that is going to be uh, chosen from for all of our items. Uh, so the last thing that we need to provide is our actual data template selector. So here we go, data. Uh, well, actually, I need to uh, do this, subscribe data template selector. Uh, so there's other ways to do this. I always find this the easiest. Now it will give me an error uh, and I can let the IntelliSense solve that. So it will add this XML namespace here at the top uh, because you know you need to specify um, like the namespace where this data template selector is living um, and you can make it accessible by this little short name. Well, typically it's short. So let's make it a uh, template. Uh, temp temp cell temp cell let's make it that and now you can change this to temp cell and it will know my subscribe data template selector um, and in here you can see subscribe template and the other template so these are the properties that i've implemented so let's make that subscribe template and set it to static resource uh, subscribe template so this is effectively the reference to this and let's close that properly and then we have to configure our other template which is also going to be a static resource and this is going to be our other template so here we go now this is configured as well um i think this will still give us an error because the x key is um, required so let's give this also an x key so we also have a name to reference this as well and this is going to be my template selector here we go again this can be any name um, as long as you can just reference by it so let's copy this one and the last thing we need to do is actually apply this to our collection view of course so the way to do that is scroll down to our collection view and we can say uh, item template so this is the exact oops i Item template, there we go. This is the exact same property that you would use to specify like a single template for all of your items, uh, but you can also provide it with the data template selector. Um, and then it will uh, detect that and run through the code that we've just configured. So this is again in our resources. So let's just create a static resource thing here and uh, point that to our template selector. Uh, so now it will know that whenever it uh, needs to apply a template, which is for each and every one of these items, right? here so it will evaluate each item and it will go through the template selector which it then gets from this resources here um, in our code here and it will see hey do i need to apply this template or that template so let's stop running for a bit and um, run it and see if this theory actually holds up uh, so what we expect to see is it goes through our collection here and this should be uh, what did i say green this should be red and this should be green again because you know that is the way the templates are applied because um, if there is lowercase subscribe in there then it should make it uh, red and underlined um, so that is all the things that we are expecting to see in our application here we go, our app is coming up. And here you can see the different templates are applied. So this is a very simple example, of course, but you can do all kinds of crazy things. If you are showing a shopping cart, I don't know, you can do things based on the different types of products or um, whenever you're making a social app on the different kind of timeline, uh, things that you're seeing. So one thing can be a post, one thing can be a, a, a short or what is called a fleet on Twitter or uh, whatever. And you can show that in a different way by applying the right 
templates. I just wanted to point you uh, real quickly to the docs page uh, because there is a couple of limitations and things that you should know. Um, so they are noted here and uh, you can read it for yourself. Um, I will copy the link of course in this video description. One thing that is very important if, is you know these kinds of things that it must not return a different template uh, selector class all of a sudden and it must always return the same template if it's queried multiple times because you know this would just three items but if your list has uh, a long number of items then you want to enable virtualization uh, which means that not all the items are already loaded in your collection view but they will be loaded as the user is scrolling um, and then you want to like you know cache the data templates in your little data template selector class and it will return um, the right one each time um, so kind of the same thing um, you will need to return the same one so uh, based on your logic in the data template selector you will have to return the same template because else uh, it will probably just crash and on android you can uh, have no more than 20 different uh, data template selectors it says per list view but i'm pretty sure that this also um, is in place for the collection view so with the code that i implemented right now this should automatically work because you know you have just specified a resource that is the template that is the instantiation of that resource that will be the same thing that is returned over and over again but if you are going to create your templates in code for instance then that might be a completely different thing so something you want to note also it says here consuming data template selector in XAML of course everything you uh, have just seen in this video you can also do in C sharp um, as uh, is shown on this page right here and with everything I just like XAML but you know you can do everything in C sharp as well um, so just some things to keep in mind um, and now you know how to create those data template selectors and just like that you've learned how to do different templates for different types of data um, you can implement your own logic on how to do those selection of the data template so that is really really cool now go out and make your data look pretty now, if you've been following me on my social media, then you might have known that I've got a new camera, a new lens. You can see I did a little bit thing with the lighting. Um, is this good? Is this a little bit more developer dark mode? Do you like it? Let me know in the comments. Um, or maybe, you know, I have to rearrange some things. I will probably do that anyway, but um, I'm interested in your opinion as well, as always. Also, a quick shout out to Pablito Piova. Um, thank you for the support. He joined my membership. Um, so, you know, he supports me a little bit while doing all this, and I really appreciate it. I couldn't do it without you. That's all I'm doing it for. So um, the tier you subscribe to, a little shout out. Let me know if I can do anything for you, and um, I will be happy to be chatting with you a little. If you're interested in becoming a member as well click that join button so not only the subscribe button but also the join button and you can join my channel for a little fee which is really really awesome um, thank you again for watching this video please click that like button as always click that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet to be notified of new content um, see that in your timeline automatically and i'll be seeing you for my next video